Hello everybody and welcome to another Hawkeye Star Rail video. Today I'm going to be doing the adventuring trial. Now, I don't have access to any kind of uh, uh, player server uh, where you get access to the characters preemptively. If I don't pull them on my account, I never get to technically first-hand play them unless I'm doing, um, unless I use support characters. Uh, so with that being said, I like recording and giving my first reactions to actually being in the driver's seat of the gameplay of new characters. Now I know we got to see Aventurine's, uh, I know we got to play as Aventurine during the story quest, but I never, you know, recorded any of that because I don't record story because I am a, a story skipper. Uh, so I, I didn't really record any of that. I just figured, you know, even though, yes, technically I have gotten to play uh, with Aventurine in the story, uh, in the MSQ, even though I didn't have him on my account, just like everybody did, I still want to, you know, keep the theme of doing every character's uh, trial on the on the channel and giving my reactions to them. But first, we're gonna do six pulls, cause why not? We're gonna do six uh, stellar warps, and we're gonna see what happens. You know, why not? We have six. By the way, I would like to say we have like no pity. Okay, we got a March 7th. That's 20 on Dying Starlight. That's nice. I can't wait till March 8th comes out. Really excited for that. That is going to be really hype. Um, but yeah. I'm not getting anything. This is rough. I mean, not that I expect to get anything. Like I said, I, I really shouldn't. I'd be insane if I did. Uh, but yeah, okay. As expected, we didn't get anything. That's fine. Let's do the trial for adventure. Alright, so Aventury provides a stackable special shield to all allies, triggers follow-up attacks after allies with special shield are attacked, okay, and increases crit damage taken by enemies. Okay, so that's pretty good. Still water runs deep. Now, I'm pretty sure what his uh, thing does, what his technique does, is... It gives him a shield whenever the battle starts, but it's not always the best. I believe the spades are the best one. Um, sometimes you have to use his, uh, his technique multiple times to make sure that you get it. Like, I don't think that's the greatest. That's not the greatest. That's not the greatest. There's triple jades. That's why it has the fireworks. We're going to get into this battle. We're going to use the weakness. Okay, so let me just make sure what I was saying was right. Technique. Using the technique rem randomly grants one out of the following three defense boost effects okay yeah each with different buff values after entering the next battle increase all allies defense by the corresponding value um i'm 99 percent sure the spade is the one that is the best because he is kind of like spade is the buff that he puts on him um uh we'll, we'll talk about this a little more so the basic attack is obviously deals minor imaginary damage to a single target enemy the skill is provides all allies with a fortified wager shield whose shield effect is stackable. Okay, and what that means is that the skill shield is stackable with the uh, the follow-up attack, uh, the talent shield. Okay, so ultimate. Grants a random amount of blind bet points and inflicts unnerved on a single enemy. Dealing increase, uh, dealing imaginary damage. When an ally hits an unnerved enemy, the crit damage dealt increases. So basically how Ho Ho and Fushuan give buffs to your team, and so does Luocha. He gives like a 10% attack buff whenever his field is out, I believe, with his E1. Um, and that's, you know, you have to have his E1 for that to happen. But how those three uh, sustained characters all give buffs to your team by existing, uh, Aventuring gives a debuff to an enemy, which is basically like still increasing your team's damage output, uh, just like the buffs. But it is a debuff, which means that actually he synergizes pretty well with Aventuring, uh, not Aventuring, he is Aventuring, uh, with Acheron there, because Acheron will gain a stack of her ultimate, a stack towards her ultimate, whenever the enemy gains a debuff. That's pretty good. And then Talent, for any single ally with Fortified Wager, their effect resist increases, and when they get attacked, Aventuring accumulates Blind Bet. When Aventuring has Fortified Wager, he can resist crowd control debuffs. Upon reaching 7 points of Blind Bet, Aventuring consumes the 7 points to launch a follow-up attack that deals minor damage to a random single enemy tar 
All right, to random single enemy targets, bouncing a total of seven times. So, basically what that means, uh, a little bit of, uh, a little bit more depth there would be nice. Uh, so I'm going to give it to you guys. If he, so basically, he gives himself, like, the spade, like a spade will be over his head. If he specifically gets attacked, he will actually contribute two points towards his blind bet. If an enemy gets attacked, they will contribute one point towards his blind bet. And then whenever you really, uh, whenever you get to seven points, he launches his follow-up attack. Not only that, I'm 99% sure that when an ally uses a follow-up attack, he also gets a blind bet stack. That is why he, he works so well with follow-up attackers. Um, I really wish it said that in the talent when they get attacked, but I believe that might actually be in his... Uh, that might be one of his traces. But that's why he is really good with follow-up characters specifically. One, because he is a follow-up attack character, but two, because follow-up attack characters uh, can get him to his blind bet stacks faster. Oh my god, look at this. See, attacked Welt, so that was three. But it attacked him with the AoE there, so it gave him two. Boom. Whenever it hits AoE, it always gives two, because anytime adventuring stacks, it would it like prioritizes the two. All right, let's use the AoE here. Let's use the Welt alt. I should have actually used Pale alt first. I don't know why I didn't. I'm trolling. Of course, this is the trial. Didn't, you know, I'm not min-maxing, but if I was... Okay, now let's use adult. Let's see. Bust? I'm about to. Okay, and he actually gave himself some blind bet stacks by doing that. All right, now let's watch this stack, sh uh, the shield stack. Uh, all these shields that are currently on the team, and I know this is like most of their health bar. It's literally like 99% of Aventurine's health bar. But watch the the shield stack from using his skill because I haven't used his skill yet. This is all from his passive. This is all from his passive. So watch this. Yep. Everybody is fully 100% of their health bar shielded. Insane character. So we're going to do the break. Oh, okay, we failed. Halo's going to do the break. And obviously we don't need to shield. So we're just going to attack. Okay. We're gonna use the pale alt because uh, this this uh, guy is about to attack. He's gonna use the AOE. It's gonna hit Aventuring. Aventuring is gonna use his follow up attack, and maybe this follow up attack actually kills uh, since we have the debuff decrease on. Boom. All right. Never mind. I thought it'd be his turn. Well, it's about to go crazy. He's actually just gonna break them. Uh, like they're not gonna be able to play. Okay, there we go. Now Aventuring is gonna use his follow-up attack, and he beat him. There we go, 17k battle over. So that is Aventuring, guys. That's Aventuring. He's really, really, really cool. Really, really good. Very strong character. Now I'm gonna make a whole video why I believe, personally, you don't have to pull for Aventuring, right? especially if you have two uh, sustainers, but I strongly believe if you wait a little bit, you can, you can, and let's say you like abundance characters, let's say you like healers, you prefer that, prefer healing more than shielding, more than preservation. I don't know. Maybe that's some people's cup of tea, all right? Um, I think I do. I feel a little bit more safer when it happens. The only thing that makes me feel not as safe is the fact that my characters can get one shot they haven't really made a healer that can um, counter that, except for Bayou, funny enough, even though she is probably the worst healer in the game other than Natasha. Um, so even though Bayou is like the second worst healer in the game, um, despite being a five star, she still has the revive mechanic. That's like the only, that's, that's like the huge counter thing. Um, but, but, um, yeah. I'm going to make a whole video on why I believe that Aventurine is not a must-pull. Now, I know a lot of people say, you know, a lot of people know that he's not a must-pull, but I especially think he's not a must-pull because I have a prediction on a new character that will probably be out in about three patches from now. That's right, that's the patch after uh, 
uh, Firefly and Jade come out, I have a prediction that a that a uh, really good abundance character, hopefully going to be the best one in the game when it drops, is going to be released. So thank you all for watching. If you like the video, like the video. If you dislike it, dislike it. Make sure you check that video out when it comes out. But if you really like Aventurine, he is a really badass character. He is really cool. I actually threw 40 pulls to the wind to see if I could get him. I ended up getting the early five star, which was not expected at all. I could have just thrown 40 pulls into the dirt and lost, but I actually did win. I got a five star and ended up being Japart. So, hey, I got my, I got my uh, shielder, but I didn't get the shielder. Thank you all for watching. Peace.